Good morning. Good morning. All right, how you doing this morning? Fine, and you? Doing very good this morning. What on? Huh? What on? What on this morning? Me? I'm here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. But how you doing? I'm doing very good this morning. I can't complain. Good, good. Yeah, I can't complain. Sorry, this that conference number was not recognized. Please re-enter your conference number, followed by the pound sign. Mm. This is the Who are you on this morning? Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's the who was she on this morning? Mm. Yeah, she on she fading away, but she on. Who asked about me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing okay. good. How about you, see you? I'm doing okay. Doing okay. She's out. She must, she's doing okay. She must be she must slow this morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm taking you on this morning. Oh, yeah. I should have been at my conference line. <laughs> Sorry. I can 
see who that is. Okay. All right. Thank you, God, for 
Lord, and able, Lord, to see your bright sunshine shining yeah. out God, this morning. Because mm-hmm. we know, God, you brought it up this morning, Father God. And then, God, I'm asking you this morning, Lord, to bless sick everywhere in rest homes and hospitals, all those that are lying on their bed of affliction this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus. And then, Father God, teach us how to pray. Thanks to pray for us. And then, God, I bless you, Lord, to continue, Lord, to keep our church saints. Things in your care, God, and Allison Chapel, God, as we move forward, God, on this day, Lord, giving you glory and giving you praise because you're worthy, God, to be praised. And then, Lord, teach us how to pray. Thanks to pray for us. Help us, God, to stay armored up from the crown of our head down to the soles of our feet, Father God. And then, God, help us to stay in your word, Lord, because the enemy, God, is trying to wear us down. But if we know we stay in your word, God, we'll be all right, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And then, God, again, Lord, teach us how to pray. Thanks to pray for us. And then, God, invite your Holy Spirit, God, your anointing, God, into this house. This day, God, have your way, God, in this house right now, Father. And if the word go out this morning, God, that it won't go out, Lord, Father God, that it took somebody, God, out here in this congregation, God, that don't know you, God, in the part of their sins, Lord. Help them, God, to give up, God, this morning, knowing, God, that you're on your way back. And help us, God, to stay focused. Teach us how to pray. Thanks and pray for Father God. This prayer I lay before you this morning. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord. Amen. 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 Now, we're going to turn it over to our speaker. Thank you, Reverend Faith, for that prayer. Now, we're going to turn it over to our speaker this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our lesson for today is from the book of, is from Psalm 130. And the subject is God redeems us. And this psalm, Psalm 130, it, it, it reminds us that when our sins drag us down, God's power to redeem will put us on our feet again. And as we start out verse 1, it says, O Lord, from the depths of despair, I cry for your help. Open your ears. Listen to my cries for mercy. Hear me. Answer me. Help me. And then it says, Lord, if you keep in mind our sin, then who can stand? Who could ever get answers to this prayer? But you forgive. How awesome. That's why you are worshiped. And he says in verse 5, he says, That is why my soul waits expectantly, trusting God to help what he has promised. And the psalmist says, Wait for the morning. So my soul waits for the morning more than they that watch for the morning. Then he stressed, he repeated, he said, I say more than that which watch for the morning. And he says in verse 7, O Israel, wait and watch for God. With God's bridal come love and generous redemption. And the last verse said, He shall redeem Israel. He shall buy back Israel from the captivity of sin. As we look uh, closer at this lesson here, you know, we, we see another promise. Just like the, we had in the past two lessons, crying out to God, he admits his need and he's distressed as he asked for divine help. And he said, he said he cried out to the Lord out of the depths. <clears throat> and the depths here represent the great distance between the psalmist and the Lord. Because, see, human sin and God's holiness are not being built. The psalmist in his, th- in his third time, the psalmist felt like, well, I'm going down for the third time. And so because of his sin and his guilt before the Lord. You know, people experience depth of poverty, sorrow, 
come to our conclusion and pain. But the depth that this song is cried out here for, the depth of the awareness He said, you know, he realized that the shortcoming, and he know he has, he's in trouble. So just like we were, he calls on the Lord. And at the same time, his acts of crying out to the Lord, you know, the act in itself is an act of faith in God, because he, he knows if he didn't have some small hope, you know, some of the hope that God was out there, then why bother to pray at all? But Jesus tells us even faith the size of a mustard seed is enough to move mountains. And, and you see, <clears throat> it, it's not about the amount of faith you have, but that you have in it all. God can work without with any size. All it took was the psalmist cried out to God for the Lord to act on and, and the same is true for us, believers now. That's why we just cry out to the Lord. And the, and, and the psalmist here, he said, you know, just as God heard the psalmist's prayer, he also hear our prayer, even when we feel like he does not. He's always aware of our cry. And Matthew 6 and 8 says, he knows our needs before we even ask. But when we ask, we develop our relationship with him. And he wants the relationship to go both ways. Just like any healthy human relationship, the more we commune with him, the stronger our bond of trust becomes. And the deeper our faith will grow. You know, it's like taking care of a plant. It will not grow without nourishment. If you just put it out there, some plant requires a lot of care. Some plants you can just put it anywhere and it, it will it will survive. But certain some plants, if they don't get the proper nourishment, they will not grow. So that's the way it is with us. Our nourishment is our communication with God. And the more we commune with him, the more stronger our faith gets. And the deeper our faith will grow. So and this is what the psalmist was experiencing. And, and he admitted his sentiments, but he, he asked him for help. He said, if you, Lord, said, but if you keep a record of wrongdoing, who can who stand a chance before you? Who can stand, who can stand a chance before you? And the short answer is none of us will. And, and, you know, he hoped he would not get from the Lord the just, just justice which is what he would deserve for his sin, which is what all of us will. But he, he, want, he know God is just, but he's looking for mercy. He's looking for grace. And, you know, if the Lord was only just, then no human would have any hope before him. But we have all committed crime, and there's no getting around it. That would be nothing to excuse our behavior or hide behind it that God could not see our mistakes. Uh, thankfully, that is not where God leaves us. You see, the Lord is indeed perfectly just. Just. He's a just God. But at the same time, He's a gracious. He is gracious beyond me. And people who do not live up to the Lord's justice, you know, they can still cast themselves on His mercy. Because God's grace is more important than human guilt. And, and the psalmist says, you know, he, he, he acknowledged that what human cannot earn by merit, by their own merit, by doing what, doing good, by the law, the Lord offers by grace. And by his forgiveness, he proves himself more important than sin. And, you know, one of the great purposes of God's forgiveness is to build a sense of gratitude, honor, and devotion. To build that up in those in us, he, for whom he forgives. He forgives us and then he wants to build us up. You know, this forgiveness, it, it's not just a covenant of sin, but it's a complete removal of sin. And that is wonderful. That is so wonderful. And, and the psalmist stressed that the Lord's faithfulness, he said his faithfulness inspired hope in him. Because 
know the Lord has been faithful. That 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 made hope rise in the sun. And especially since God's word cannot fail. And, and um, now this is not some hope that maybe God might be listening and might decide to answer. No, no. The son has had hope that sprung up in him and, and, and said, you know, this was a confident expectation that the Lord would hear his prayer and would send an answer. Now, though the, <clears throat> though the, the Lord doesn't always answer our prayer in the way we would like, we know he always hears them. There is not a single thought or a single tear that escaped his notice. So when we don't feel heard, we can trust that the answer is on the way. And, and you know, he talked about his soul wait for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. You know, this is much like the watchman. And most places have, especially big plants and all, they have a watchman um, at night. And the watchman walks around and, 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 and protects, protects the city. But the watchman also know that he probably get tired and say, they're watching for morning. They can't wait till morning come. You know, it's kind of like when we have some situation, you know, if you get sick in the night, you hate to go to the emergency room because you know you'll be there for a while. You hate to go and you say, if I can, if I can just hold out to in the morning, things will be better. There's something about the darkness that makes you feel deserted, makes you feel lost. It makes you feel so bad. But when the sun, when the daylight comes, it's a different story. And, and you say, well, if I'm going to take this and I'm going to take that and I'm going to pray, and if I can just hold out to the morning. And then sometimes you get a letter and you say, well, I, I, I need to call this office. But the office is already closed. So what you have to do, and you know, all night long, you don't sleep well because your mind is on taking care of that. And, and this is what the watchman said. This is the way he felt, the way we feel about the things I just mentioned. Um, he's saying, if we can just well, hold out to the moment. And the watchman kept looking and saying, it's a long night, the watchman was saying. So the psalmist is saying, he is in his guilt. In, in his situation, in his death, he, he just, he can't hardly wait until his, his action. He's just anxious for God to answer and help him out of there as we are when we are having a bad night and can't hardly wait until the morning comes. There's something about the darkness that makes us feel helpless. It makes us feel low, and we just say, if I can just hold out to the night, a few more hours. In the morning come. So we're watching for that. That's the way the son he feels like. And why he's in the depths of despair. He's calling on God. You know, the, the, he knows morning is coming. The watchman knows morning is coming. And we know morning is coming. But the night's been long. Especially when we're dealing with some situation. It seems everything seems worse at night. And so... And so let's wait for the Lord to respond to your cry so that he can rise from the darkness of guilt into the light of forgiveness. And then he talks about, you know, and then the son has learned. He learned, he said, now, in waiting upon God and trusting him from the depth is now put to use. And he called upon Israel to put that hope in God. He said, now, look, I, 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 I discovered this. And, and y'all can do the same thing. You can cry uh, to God and put your faith in him. And God can do the same thing for you as he's going to be doing for me. He put his faith and hope in the Lord, in the Lord himself. See, he didn't just put it. <clears throat> he didn't just put it in the, in the mercy or the redemption of God would bring. He looked to the giver before the gift. And uh, he knew that if he got the giver, he has everything, and we do too. When we have God, we, I mean, we should love God. We should worship God. We should be concerned more about our relationship with God than worry about the gifts he can give 
Oh no, because when we get God, we're followers of God. Then we then we get all these other benefits: mercy, redemption, grace, and all that. But the thing about it is, worship the giver and not the give. Be thankful to the giver. And not, not necessarily just come. You get the giver, you got everything else coming to you. And, and his, his hope was renewed. And, it, and, and you know, it just, he was so excited about his hope. It, it, it spilled over. And it, and, and it began to say other. He says, he called on Israel to join him. Called on Israel to join him and hoping in the Lord. He said, there's hope. He said, you look at all the times in the Bible where the Israelites seemed like God would bless them. They'd be good for a while. They then begin. They go right back to the old stuff. They cry out to God. God was raising them. They do. They go on again. It's like they were constantly on the seesaw. And but he hears the psalmist saying, "Look, look, I have hope in God. I know He's gonna answer me. Not necessarily when I want or just how I want." So, but y'all, y'all can do the same thing. Oh, so you can do the same thing. And what he had done in his personal life, he won't apply it to the whole nation. He won't the nation to say, look, y'all, this can happen to y'all. I have hope in the Lord. I know he's going to answer. I don't know when, don't know how, don't know which way it's going. It may not be what I'm asking for, but I know I'm crying out to the Lord. And he promised that he would hear my cry. And now, you know, if you know, if a believer, if a believer in Christ, if you truly recognize how bad and simple you were before God came into your life. And then you look at it now and see how much better your life is now that he is in there. And to see how much better it is now with him in your life. You know, this this should make believers have a continuous praise for God. Should be praising God all the time. You know, we should relate, to, yeah, we can kind of relate to the blind man in, in his testimony in John 9 and 25 when he said, I don't know nothing else, but all I know is I was blind, but now I see. And, and remember, we were once blind to the things of God, but now as we read God's word, we pray and we meditate we're seeing the light. We see the light now, and we know that we can talk to God for ourselves. We don't have to go like they did in the olden days and once a year present a blemished animal, let the priest talk to God for us. We were, we were blind, but now we see. And we have learned a lot in our own churches. We learn how, how we need to pray. Ourselves. We learn to pray. We don't just wait and just go to church on Sunday and get whatever you get. Bring something with you when you come on Sunday. So that's going to help the service move smoother. Everybody can get something out of it. But we were blind, and now we see we, we, we all got Bibles, and we got, we got tapes, we got stuff on our phone, a whole lot of things we can do, we can use. And that's a blessing. But the thing about it is, we can, we can see now, oh, it was crowded before, and we depended on somebody else, the preacher, the pastor, or somebody, uh-uh, now we know the word, and we can all live it together, and we can bring something to the church, and, and not necessarily come to get stuff at all the time. And then, you know, being overwhelmed by God's goodness and mercy, that ought to inspire us to live lives that are pleasing to God. You know, we should remember that we've been redeemed at a price, and our lives should show a humble, grateful attitude. And, and you know, Psalm 130 is a, it's a powerful reminder of the grace and the mercy of God. Now, now this song describes that the Lord is just, but also forgiven. We are, we are never out of the reach of God. And, and see, and, as we, uh, in First Timothy was talking about, Paul was talking about how he was and all that. And he said, you know, if he was 
not out of the reach of God. None of us are. He said, if God can offer salvation and redemption to a man like Saul of Tarsus, he can offer it to anyone. That's how great and how wide his love is. There's no limit on his mercy for us. Now, we can cry out to him no matter what we have done or where we have been. We cry out to the Lord. And, 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 you know, for the depth of God's love and mercy, that is beyond what we can even dream or imagine. We could never understand that. God loves us no matter what. But he wants the same from us, too, no matter what. He's saying this is a two-way thing now. If you can communicate with him, then you, I want you to communicate with me because he's the one that's going to give out grace and mercy when we need it the most. And he's saying to us, he said, now, you you have a have your relationship with me just like you with your friend or somebody on earth. And each time we commune, you're going to get stronger. You're going to learn more. You're going to be wiser. But the more you stay with me, the more you would be able to do. So he said, I deserve your attention. I deserve your devotion. I deserve your loyalty. I'm looking out for you. So we see, because as soon as trouble comes, we're going to go to the Lord. That's one thing we're going to do. And we're going to ask him to help us. And, And he may not even do it the way we think he ought to do See, sometimes we go to him, but we already got it figured out. Lord, I got A, B, and C, and D. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. But you know, you say, Lord, have mercy on me. Please help me. Like the psalmist say, I'm in the depths of despair. Help me. And that's that's what the psalmist to say would say. And we should be the same way. However, God can work it decide to work it out, because he's the only one who knows how it should be with that. He knows what's best for us. So if we don't necessarily get it done, like just in step one, two, and three, just like we want to, God may decide step three may be done first. But how everything, see, when we turn it over to him, how he work it out, that's his fault, and that's his business. All we know, he worked it out for us. Not exactly like I was thinking he was going to work, but he worked it out. And he worked it out for my good and his glory. Mm-hmm. So he said, and so no matter what, he wants the same from us, no matter what. Are there any comments? Are there any comments? Yes, uh, Trustee Wooten, uh, we're thankful that God is working it out for us, and all we have to do, we have to learn how to trust Him more. Um, I heard somebody say um, this week say that we are say we are believing Christians but practicing atheists. We say we believe, but we in our walks and our actions, we act like we don't believe. So we just have to trust God to work it out in our lives. That's right. But he's the only one can work. He know what we need. We know what we want. You just have to keep it on believing in God and do what he asked us to do. That's that's right. Uh, uh, we have to do for our lives and stuff, like working and stuff. If we have a job, we got to go to that job and do the best we can for that job so we can still get our redemption from there. Mm-hmm. And see, we have to get to a point where we, we we trust God. We trust God enough to ask God to guide us. And then we got to, we have to also be willing to be disciplined by God because sometimes God has got to do some things in us before he can even help us. Yes, sir. So we, we have to. But he wants God wants to see what we gonna do before he help us. But like you said, if we don't do what he uh, it can't help ourselves, he'll step in and do it for us. But because you know you don't 
see him like you do the ordinary human person, it may seem a little difficult to do that. But once you get talking to God, once you talk to him on a daily basis, and, you know, it's something that you, once you talk to him, the more you talk to him, the more you want to talk to him.